Um, now, for one, I did try to help where I could. Name the branches of the Haitian military. Now, an interesting note about Haiti is they actually have no military branch. And so when you left that blank and put a question mark, I gave you a point for that. Because I thought that was... Um... Now, I know that you did at least try to fill in a lot of the blanks. And question two of section two, general knowledge, about how big is Haiti in square kilometers or square miles? Her answer? That's a good question. <laughs> I was not able to give you a point um, for that. Now, I do know that um, Ivana was working hard to help your test out, and I had to take one from here. Name the Haitian leader who oversaw the building of both the Citadel and the Sun's Palace. Now, these great landmarks in Haiti have been here for a long, long time. Uh, Ivana gave you a point for Praval, the current president of Haiti. However, that is not correct. It's Henry Kristoff, uh, like a long time ago, like a George Washington type of guy is what we were looking for there, uh, not Praval. Uh, give the names of the father-son dictators who ruled Haiti from 1957 to 1986. In parentheses, not their nicknames. And although you gave their nicknames, Papa Doc and Baby Doc, uh, you finally gave you points for that, which I had to then kind of correct. So you kind of understand where... I was excited. How you actually ended up losing. What is T-Man's real name? Claude. <laughs> he is not Claude. And last question on the test. What is the mission's photographer's first and last name? Uh, Andy Olson. You did get two points for that. However, I had to deduct the two points Ivana gave you for Erica Olson because we did not ask for spouse name. So that kind of cost you some points there. So looking down to where we are right now, we have uh, Sparkle, Lynn, and Ashley at the bottom of the totem pole, which leaves us two people for the very top. Now, in a Lemony Snicket kind of unfortunate chain of events that took place. The way Ivana had the test graded, uh, Josh actually had had 80 points, the highest score. However, upon further review and correction, Josh was docked three points for a score of, total score of 77. Lindsay had 79 points to start with, and when we corrected the test, she ended up with 80 points. So Lindsay is your winner for the heart challenge. So I know she's gonna be so excited to hear that, and yet so disappointed that she wasn't here to be able to rub that in. One of the things about tonight, though, we understand is that someone's going home. Uh, someone is not missionary Trump type uh, caliber. Uh, although you might be Christ-like and patient and gentle, those are all fruits of the Spirit and we appreciate that in you. However, that doesn't always make for the best missionary here in Haiti, and uh, that might get you into the kingdom, it might not get you into the final round here in Missionary Prentice. So on that note, we are now left to decide the bottom two and their, and their fate, now based on competition number two, it is Team Impact's plan for Salings Maya. A lot of effort went into, actually went into both, so far all three competitions. Uh, we have here uh, two pieces of paper that kind of lay out the details of this plan. Now the reason why these things were laid out on paper 
such as this was that I wanted to be able to be uh, completely free of any bias toward any group or individual as I looked over these plans, seeking not to benefit the team uh, in this event, but actually the children themselves, and to find out which one I actually thought had the best layout um, for Sally's Maya for 150 plus children that will, uh, oddly enough, all three plans uh, seem to be the same plan uh, that I found myself looking at as we were going in circles, literally with the homes, and looking at uh, the layout of how uh, those homes were constructed. I did find some things that I liked here. There is a plan in which we stack the homes. Uh, I did like that as far as uh, we have a budget to build 10. In stacking them, we could reduce that to five or four in this instance of uh, plan one here. And I, I like that layout. However, some of the issues I had in understanding making an impact on the land, on the ground, you have a square to start with. Fitting an oval inside a square is going to allow for some wasted space on the uh, outside parts uh, of the land. And so that kind of concerned me. Um, now, the one thing, you, and you did kind of change up your variations a little bit here and there, and I do appreciate that because it gave me some things that I could think about. I like turning the soccer, uh, so the soccer field the way you did it, and interesting to put it at the end uh, of the land, kind of opposite end of, of where maybe some people would think. However, one thing that seemed to make it through all three drawings was that the uh, jungle gym, uh, which I think is a tr terrific idea for the children. Um, the jungle gym is in the middle of the ravine. <laughs> Um, I appreciate the oval and the square and the semicircle, <laughs> but the jungle gym in the ravine. Now, oddly enough, in Haiti, uh, we have flash floods, <laughs> and I was very concerned. And I appreciate the footbridge. You put a footbridge that crosses the ravine to get from one part of our land to the other part of our land. However, you also put the jungle gym in that same ravine. And uh, that seems to be just a touch irresponsible <laughs> and frankly a little bit dangerous uh, for the children that would be playing there on any set occasion of when they could possibly be flooded and swept away. Now that would help on numbers. And help on feeding and food distribution. However, we would really like to refrain from losing any of these orphaned children. The Divine Little Einsteins. Now, Divine Little Einsteins, their layout, although a bit confusing in the beginning, I do appreciate their attention to detail, and the vision that um, the Divine Little Einsteins had in actually planning out land that we yet own, uh, and, and taking the time to, to come up with some things, a bike path, a swimming hole, a fish hatchery, uh, all, uh, all great things that I see, I like the layout. There's a lot of attention to detail here. Uh, what now you guys try to fit a lot of things into this plan. However, putting an amphitheater in the ravine also seemed a bit careless and dangerous. Although the jungle gym, we might stand to lose 20 children. Uh, we have just lost the entire orphanage. <laughs> And probably a few uh, missionaries as they do the puppet show at the amphitheater in the ravine. 